Sorry for the slight delay. We were a little worried. Mr. Mag is not here yet. So very unlike him. So we are encouraged that he is in route. Uh, so he'll be with us. He speaks last, so I guess he figures the rest of us are going to carry a little bit of time. So, well, good evening and welcome to the 2023 2024 school year. Uh, we can just pause as we begin tonight uh, and a bit of a moment of prayer. Please pray with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the blessings of this day this opportunity to gather here as part of the SMCC family. We ask you to be with us this year as parents, as educators, as we seek to form the next generation of disciples, in yours and our sons and daughters. We ask you to bless us in this school year and all that it will hold for us. We ask you to bless us this day as we come to the close of this day. Be with us and our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get started in a new school year. Let me ask this question first. How many parents and seniors do we have in the room tonight? Any parents and seniors? Okay, this question is for you and a couple of you I recognize you from last night, so you know what's coming. Um, for how many of you is this senior who's in this year is your oldest, first in high school? So your first experience with senior year. It's a little sad, a little melancholy, right? You start to see No, we got some head, big, strong head shakes of no. Okay. Um, well, so then for how many of you is this senior, not your first, this is your first rodeo with senior year? You've been down the road, Todd's been down this road before, Becky, okay. Um, and then for how many of you who aren't rookies, how many is this? Is the the last one. Oh, look at those hands. Keep up really fast. There we go. All excited. Um, these are the happiest people in the room tonight, right? Right, Deirdre? A little bit? <laughs> okay. Well, we're hoping that uh, all of you, regardless of where you are with your students at the station in life, um, are excited about the start of the new school year as we are. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we spent today with our freshmen and transfer students, um, so it's a very exciting day for us. We got them in the building, went through their schedules, um, got a chance to help them download all their di digital textbooks and all their curriculum, um, and just the wonder of getting lost in our building, which seems very strange to us adults who understand it's just two floors, one on top of the other. It's not hard to see them walk down the hallway like this. Um, even the ones who have been in the building many, many times before seem to not know exactly where they're going. So it's a fun day for us and uh, we hope for the students. Um, tomorrow will be a faculty work day and then, of course, we'll get started uh, early on Wednesday morning with the new school year. We're happy to kick things off tonight, um, welcoming all of you back. Uh, this year marks the 177th year of Catholic education in our community uh, and a long tradition of uh, service by the Sisters Service of the Heart of Mary later the Brothers of Holy Cross, we the faculty and staff at SMCC um, join in that mission and are uh, honored to carry on that legacy and tradition. Specifically, I mentioned each year that our mission isn't just to provide second, Catholic secondary education to your sons and daughters, but more specifically, our mission is to help you as parents save your student's soul. That is the work that we set about each year, to claim your sons and daughters for Christ and to ultimately help them get to heaven. We exist first, and most importantly, to form the next generation of disciples. And we as a faculty and staff believe there's no greater calling or charge in this life. It is our universal call of holiness as human beings, and it's an incredible honor to work alongside of you and to do this work. Um, throughout the long history of Catholic education uh, in Monroe, this work is a partnership and a collaboration with you as parents, nurturing your dreams and your students' dreams. And so we're happy to, to begin once again endeavor this year. Um, when we talk about the year and how we start, we always like to frame the year for our students, and this year we pick a specific theme um, in order to kind of encapsulate what we hope this year and the years to come will mean for them. The best thing in life, uh, the best things in life almost never come simply or without sacrifice. And you all know that very, very well as parents. Saving souls and spreading the gospel message of love and redemption is not for the lazy or the timid. The theme that we've adopted for this year's school year is be salt and light. Now, for you Protestant parents out there who are much better acquainted with Holy Scripture than us Catholics, you already know that that passage comes from Matthew chapter 5. Uh, this passage comes in the midst of one of the most powerful chapters in the New Testament. Jesus has just delivered the Sermon on the Mount, the roadmap to building the kingdom of 
have on earth and, and what we must do to build a just society here on, on our planet. Now he's commanding us to be for the world what it needs most, namely salt and light. He calls us each individually, not just a few of us, not your neighbor, not some politician in Lansing or Washington. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. It's a command and a call to action that compels, should compel each of us. It's a command that we would ignore to our detriment and the peril of our souls and the souls of our children. We believe that this, ultimately, is the reason that you have or will choose to send have your students or the SCCC to form. To join with us and us with you in setting them up the path to gain them. So we appreciate, we truly appreciate the confidence that you've shown in us by choosing to have your students attend SMCC. It's a trust that we humbly accept and will work very hard each day to earn from you. Um, I have a couple of uh, programming notes before I turn it over to our new principal for him to introduce himself and to give you a few uh, insights into the coming year. Stephanie Hawkins was here last night as we celebrated the freshman love of liturgy um, and wanted me to pass along information. She's the new head of the Parent Service Committee. There's information that you can pick up on your way out tonight. They are looking for volunteers for their events this year. Uh, the Parent Service Committee does wonderful work for us, like the freshman welcome mass and dinner that we held last night. Uh, those of you who remember that from your son or daughter's freshman year. Uh, they also help with a variety of events over the course of the year to uh, help support our faculty and staff, uh, as well as a couple of fundraising events that ultimately end in scholarships that are available to your sons and daughters focus on service uh, and instilling services I have in the heart of uh, in our students. That, that, um, those events are outlined in the information here along with their meetings. So any parents who are interested, this is a great way, easy way for you to earn some of your parent service hours um, that are required uh, of you uh, and your family. Um, so please feel free to pick up this brochure. It has Stephanie's contact information on it. She encourages you to reach out to her via email or, or phone or text. Um, to inquire more about their events. Um, and then I am also supposed to um, let you know that your students' quarters notes have arrived. Uh, the main office asked me to make sure that you do that. You're welcome to pick them up at the school office on, on Wednesday when they come in. Um, they'll be in, in the school office. They can see Mrs. Kennedy or Mrs. Payne uh, to pick those up. So I think those are the two housekeeping items I have. So now I'm going to turn it over to the people who will tell you how the rest of the year works. Um, that is, um, I have a very distinct honor and pleasure tonight of introducing our new principal, Mr. Joe Carroll. Uh, Joe has joined us now, I think you're in week six, is that right? Um, so he's still drinking out of the fire hose, so please be gentle with him. Um, but Joe comes to us with a tremendous amount of excellent uh, experience in Catholic school administration that he'll share a little bit about. It's been a pleasure getting to know him uh, over these past few months, and I think uh, he'll agree with me that we are extremely blessed to have a man of such great character and experience as our next principal. So please help me to welcome Joe Carroll.
As Sean mentioned, thank you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for trusting us with your uh, son and daughter. Um, for those who have seniors for the first time, good luck this year. Uh, it is a, an adventure. Um, and it's hard to believe that four years, you know, the cliche of when people say that four years goes fast, it goes twice as fast as what people think. So um, I too had a, a son who was going off to college on Sunday. Uh, he's going down to Miami in Ohio. So Thank goodness it's my second one, so I'm not feeling as bad. Um, and he's also going to school with my oldest son. So my oldest one can keep an eye on him. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We'll figure that out as the year goes on. But, so anyway, as we start this year, it's, um, it's hard to believe that we're starting on Wednesday. Uh, we met with the freshman, or saw the freshman come in this morning. And I don't know who was, well, I know who was happy. It was the parents as they were driving off, as they were dropping off the child. And I said to Sean that next year we should have a like a celebratory like table at the end of the parking lot for the parents, like cookies and like yeah you did it, congratulations summer over or something like that. Don't let the kids know that we're doing it for all the parents and for dropping off their students. So who knows maybe that could happen. I don't know. But as we start the year, um, some keys to success as we know as we venture out to this journey. One of the biggest things that I mentioned last night to the freshmen is having your students advocate for themselves. That is never more true as they get older and as we try to shape them and mold them into fine young know, men and women to venture off into the next adventure, um, whether that be a trade or in college or in the workforce or whatever that may be. And so you are investing that with us um, these past two, three, four years um, as they venture off. So one of the biggest things that I mentioned is navigating for themselves. Um, you know, talking to the teacher first talking to a coach first before they come to this investor myself or Mr. Jensen about athletics, you know, have finding that voice because I know for those of you who may have some college students in college, that voice is not allowed. Um, you know, your child is 18 and they go to college most of the time and that, that might not happen. So it's learning to advocate for themselves. So some of those things is being, you know, taking their responsibility, doing their homework. Homework counts as a big part of their grades. Um, so keeping up with the success of the homework. Teachers have Google Classrooms. Teachers have uh, a calendar that talks about tests and quizzes. Trying to help them become more independent. Um, I know that might be hard. That's a challenge. Um, some students need more hand holding and, and some don't need any at all. Um, but you know, we're trying to find that balance and allowing them to to uh, fall once in a while or to figure things out. And sometimes those are the hardest life lessons, but I know that at the end of the day, they try to come out the other end and they're more successful. Um, because as, a, as parents, we can't be there all the time. But it's also a balance because we're working together and we want that partnership and we need that partnership. So trying to find that balance with, with everything that we're doing. So the whole, there is a homework lab that is available after school. Um, and so just making sure you check with your student about, you know, are they checking Google Classroom? If you need to check Google Classroom, if you need to check PowerSchool, you've got that ability to do so. Just a reminder that iPads, um, iPads, you know, technology is here to stay, so we need to embrace it. It's only getting more and more with um, AI now entering the world, right? Um, and so understanding, just a reminder, we told the freshmen this morning, no games, no videos, um, no cell phones out there in the course of school day, you know, if you need to get a hold of your child or a message to your son or daughter, call the office, um, we can get that message to them. But just to remind them, that the iPads are not here for games or videos. You know, having charged their iPads, cell phones at home, uh, managing that time at home with them. Um, we've not allowed students who are Apple Watches, you know, check the Check with the college counselors or, or their counselors if you're having some questions or issues or they're having some questions or issues uh, with the class or with the teacher as we go forward. Parents of seniors, you can check that web page because about November 1st is the deadline. November 1st, right for college applications. And then they, the decision day is like May. So that senior I just kicks in about Christmas time. Some colleges, do rec some colleges do request second semester transcripts. So that it is vital that they do not have that senioritis. Um, and so trying to stay out of those because we continue on throughout the course of the year.
stay present in the moment, stay present in the moment, enjoy that senior year because believe it or not, they do come back and they are appreciative of everything that you have given to them um, and given them this opportunity to come to such a great school with the wonderful staff and faculty. So have them stay in the moment. When thinking about college, it's not about, you know, stress the idea of a, of a good fit for your son or daughter. I'll choose the college just based on like the money or the sport, but what's going to be a good fit is where they live for the next four years. So some students like a really big college, some students like a really small one, and, and whatever else is in the middle. Visit colleges, I think that's important at the moment. Um, and once again, just advocating for themselves. So in my six weeks that I've been here, it's been, it's been great. The sense of family, the sense of community, the sense of support that I've received, as Sean mentioned, it's like drinking out of a fire hose, the skill sets there, but learning the new school, learning the new routine. And so I just ask for your time and your patience. Don't hesitate to reach out to me and ask me questions um, or any concerns that you may have. And uh, as I've told the teachers, this school is a great place with one becoming, and I just want to continue this tradition and um, help help it become even better. So at this time, I want to pass it on to Ms. Mesker. And uh, thank you for coming this evening. And uh, let's have a great year. So don't celebrate too hard on Wednesday morning. All right, thank you. Moving on, I know 
what Mr. Carroll gently talked about are cell phone policy. I'm just going to reiterate, no phones. Uh, if a student is seen with their phone, it will be taken and be taken to my little phone jail I have in my office. And you will receive a phone call for me and then it will be a $20 fee. I do not keep the phones overnight. If you want me to keep the phone overnight, because you're mad at your kid, go ahead. I, I'll do it to support you. But I do not keep the phones overnight. But there will be a $20 fee in a phone call. So please be mindful of that. And then moving forward, so this is probably the biggest change that we're having this year is our attendance policy. So I saw a, a big need of maybe rearranging how we do our consequences when it comes to our parties specifically. So before it was first five, you get 45 minutes attention, second five, you get two, and so on and so forth. This year, moving forward, on the fifth party, they will still get their one 45 minute attention. But if they're party the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth time, each one of those times is a one hour detention. So they will be, so they're not going to be serving multiple detentions. They're just, they're just going to be, and then once we get to the tenth, that would be me calling you and saying, hi, we, we need you to come in. We're going to have a parent teacher conference with me. If it's affected the class or anything like that, we may bring in one of the college advising counselors, we may bring in uh, Mr. Carroll, and then they will be put on a disciplinary probation period for two weeks. And that can entail a whole lot of things. Uh, the whole point of this is I want to try to have the hierarchy of the consequences so they can start kind of feel a little bit more because it got to the point where our students were, I love detention. This is so fun. Um, I was like, that's not how this is supposed to be. So I'm trying to get a little more structured on that um, and a little stricter with it, just to help them realize being in school, on time, in your class, in the seat regular is the most important thing. Um, you are a student first year, and we're trying to teach you those lessons. And every time I talk to them, you can't show up late to work five times in a row, and you're not going to get fired. So those are the kind of lessons I'm trying to teach them on my end is being able to prepare for the real world after that. When it comes to sports, uh, if they have one of those hour-long detentions and it runs into their uh, sport practice time, the detention comes first because they get decided to be the student first they need to be. So I will be communicating that with the coaches as well. Uh, but if you were a parent maybe last year, I contacted you a lot about the parties. I'm not going to be sending those emails out anymore, you can just check power school. That detention will be brought on power school. If you have a question, you can call me. But don't expect the um, the emails that I was sending. There was 75 emails I was sending out within a day. So try to be a little more efficient, but that is going to be the biggest change when it comes to our consequences. So please talk to your, talk to your students about that. Um, we want to make sure we're talking about punctuality and timeliness. Very important. Moving on, so lockers, um, all the lockers are assigned. So uh, you can see the students see on Wednesday when they come in, their lockers and names are all signed. If there's a problem, because I have to sign the whole school, we can easily get it fixed. Uh, so make sure they check that. This is where they put their phones, this is where they put their nice belongings, things of that nature. They do not need a lock, we do not require them to have a lock, but we do recommend it. Um, it's always safe to have your things locked up in your locker, so if you choose to give your student a lock, we just have to have the lock code. Uh, so if you choose to do that, please let us know, I think it's perfectly fine. And then, I think that is, oh, one more thing. So when you guys are going to have to call off, um, call your student off for the day that they're sick, make sure you're doing it by 9 a.m. And make sure you also are sending a note, you can email. Our office is called, our email is mainoffice at smccmonroe.com. It's on the video, but if you have a question about the email, please contact me. Um, but anytime your student will be either leaving early for a doctor's appointment, they're showing up late because of a doctor's appointment, or they're sick, or things like that, we will need it in writing why they are late or why they are leaving if you have a senior or a junior or a student you live nearby and your student's sick and we're going to call home to say, hey, can you let us go home? That's fine. We're still going to do that, but we still need an email reminder from you because we do need to have it in writing. Uh, 
And if a student, students are not allowed to leave for lunch and come back, it needs to be for a legitimate reason, like a doctor's appointment or they're, they're actually sick. So please be mindful of that. Um, if you have any questions regarding that, and then the one last thing I want to mention is our school messenger. So that is the way in the past for calling off school if we have snow or fog or anything like that. We use a different uh, program now, we're using school messenger. So just be mindful that your contact information is all updated. So the main guardian, if it's you, make sure your cell phone number and email is updated. If there's anybody else that you want to have on that, make sure you contact our office as well. So if any things that, any alerts that are coming out, anyone that needs to get it is getting it. And I think that is all I got. So I'm really looking forward to this school year. It's nice to see all the familiar faces. It's nice to see the familiar faces as I'm going through year two. Uh, but I'm super excited that we have Mr. Gallagher here on here. We have a great team and let's get this year started. Thank you. Thank you. 
parents, um, giving them a good experience to come into our building. Um, so make sure we take care of them out of the building here without having anyone injected. Um, one was too many last year. Uh, there is a 24 hour rule, so if you got any sports, obviously a hostile situation, tempers always flare, just the nature of the game. Um, if you guys have an issue with anything going on, um, make sure you have your kid first off um, address that with the coach. Um, you know, we're trying to teach your kids to, to be upfront, handle some of their problems on their own. Um, make sure that kid has a conversation with the coach before the parent or the coach or myself. Um, you know, they're going to get to college one day, they're going to struggle on an English paper, or if they play college uh, sport, you're not going to be able to go there and just talk right to their professor. And the kid has to start handling that stuff on their own. Um, let's try and teach them to do that. Um, after the kid talks to the coach, the parent obviously can go to the coach, um, and they come to me. If you guys come to me right away, I'm going to ask, did you talk to the coach already? A lot of times the problem can get solved before it even comes to me. So make sure you have that conversation with the coach. As far as schedules, when I update, there, there, you can get schedules from a lot of different sources from all over. Our, the main source that I deal with is our schedule star, which is on our school website. So if there's changes, if you guys have a spring sport athlete, which a lot of the changes happen there, um, constantly check that because that is where I always, that's the first thing I'm going to update. Not the MHSA page, not any other NAS preps or anything else that you might see scheduled on. Um, the schedule star app is what I will deal with on the daily, on a time change or anything being switched. Um, just a reminder of our students in the for free. Uh, you guys that are bad this year, you probably know that Girls Eagle Flat Rock do Bill Fan. So if we go to an event at Girls Eagle Flat Rock, um, they do Bill Fan. A lot of times we've set up those links um, for you. Make sure your students get involved. Um, like I think it's 85 or 90 percent of our population plays sport at the school. Um, so it, it's great. It's part of the culture of the school. Even if they're not the best athlete, try try and get them involved in any way they can. Um, I know girls swim still looking for players, boys tennis. Um, so if they're not doing anything this fall, try and get involved um, in something. Um, it's just it's a good experience. If, you know, if they're an athlete, just about their sports um, helps develop them overall as an athlete. Uh, an athlete, maybe they're a leader in football, but they want to go play baseball and the worst kid on the team, you know, how can they be from not being the best player on the team? So it can give them a lot of different experiences, uh, different experiences dealing with different coaches. Um, so try to get them involved as much as they can. Uh, parents get involved as much as you can too. Um, we've had, last night we had uh, Stephanie Carlton was up here with our athletic boosters. Uh, last year in December, we um, started back up our athletic boosters, had meetings once a month. Um, it's been a great group to uh, be involved with. We have a lot of fun. We get together once a month. Um, you know, we are got, we have our blitz party coming up. and sign up there so you can have your tickets uh, for the blitz party. It's going to be a fun event uh, coming this Saturday. Uh, they also ran the reverse raffle in the winter, which was a great event for us. So we just finished up our golf outing a couple weeks ago now. Um, and all the athletic booster money goes for all our, our sports programs. Um, so I know we're making some renovations to our weight room now. Um, and, and those, the money that athletic was raises goes towards um, any uniform supplies, um, helps cover the officials costs. So and it goes for girls swim, it goes for baseball, it goes for um, you know basketball, it goes for every single sport that we do. So it's a great, great thing to be a part of. Um, we have season passes available in the office. Um, so if you guys you know have a family of Large, large Catholic family, I'm learning about large Catholic families now. Um, you know, we have those season passes in the office that are now available. It's $200 for a family pass, uh, $125 for a uh, two person pass, and $75 for a one person pass. Um, probably right now, as well as sitting over there, I sent the last sign up for um, our volleyball and football sign ups for service hours. So you'll probably get an email either tonight or tomorrow at some point to sign up. Um, to start getting your service hours. Um, included in that is our drink donations. We've done this every year, so you guys are probably familiar with that. Um, to bring in your drink donations and then sign up, um, either being a ticket taker or working the 50 50. The one thing that athletic boosters are doing this year is taking over on Spearwear. So now if we go to the football game, the volleyball game, we're going to have the Spearwear store open. We're going to be selling Spearwear at the football games. Um, we're selling t-shirts right now to students, we can send email them tomorrow. Um, 
Bill, of course, is senior designer and sees a t-shirt for uh, uh, the student section. So we sell uh, different stuff at the night throughout the year um, at some of the games. Um, like I said, just make sure to get involved. Talk to your coaches how they can get involved. Um, make sure, don't just go and do things without approval too. There's, there's some things that um, we want to make sure that, you know, you guys all want to help out, we're all on the same page. Um, just make sure that we're communicating with our coaches and myself um, so that we can organize that um, and, and guide that in the right direction. Uh, last couple items, um, another email that will be coming soon, we will be live streaming our um, football and volleyball games this year, basketball. Um, we're working to get more outdoor sports, it's hard with the cell service and stuff, but we're, we're working to do that. I know we just bought a camera from soccer last year, um, but there'll be an email coming out to sign up for that again soon. Um, I believe the package is $75 um, for the whole year, if you want that and 15 for a month. Um, so if you guys have any aunts, uncles, grandparents that can't make it to the games, um, have them sign up and we can, um, they'll be able to tune in to watch. The one change that will be on that going into this year and last year is we will go directly to our school website for to watch those events. So last year, um, I think you just went to the Puddle Team One Sports page. That is going to be embedded into our school website to draw more traffic to our school website. Uh, we'll be able to promote our, our donors and sponsors on there um, as well. So everything will be live stream football game, provide all the game. We're going to go to our school website. We'll have a link on there, and you'll be able to, to watch it there. A um, couple new items, another email is coming soon. Our college recruiting club is going to meet again in September. Um, looking to finalize. We have a lot of meetings in August, so I figured we'd get up with meetings out of the way, get our few plans of the year, and then coming in September, we'll start going over some early stuff if your son or daughter is interested in playing college athletics. Um, and then my last reminder is to follow along on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Um, any information that I post or scores, um, upcoming games and stuff, I will post on there. So make sure you guys follow along and that will get a lot of your information. So thank you. We're going to kick it off with Queen of Man, Tim Mack. <laughs> Madam Cleanup, so we'll be home soon. Um, a couple things just to remind you, my name is Mr. Mack, and I'm in charge of retreats, prayer, and service. So if you have any questions about retreats, service hours, or if you're really good at prayer, I just should be email or uh, come see me. Um, also, I do uh, some counseling as well. I have a counseling degree. If your student is struggling, you shoot me an email and tell me a little bit about their Give me a call. We, I can pull them like anonymously and say somebody's worried about you um, I'd like to find out what's going on in your life how can I help and I don't tell them who told me to bring it in um, again it's just we're looking out for them we at SECC we are a family we want to look out for each other if we don't know something's broke how can we fix it so I'd also say if you know if another student is struggling let us know that so we can look out for them um, I know some of you were here last night I know it's just an endless so I can share that story real quick about uh, Father Mike Schmitz, who's a national speaker in the United States, he's a Catholic priest in Minnesota. He was telling the story about Warren Buffett, who's a multi-billionaire. And he said he had this pilot who flew in anywhere for years. He said, you want, I want to help you. He goes, I'd love to get your help. Warren Buffett said, come up with 25 goals. So he came up with 25 goals, came back, and he goes, now I want you to whittle that down to five. Came back with his five, and he said, now I want you to just throw those other 20 goals away. And we need to focus on those five goals. The point is this. You and I are so busy with so many things. Taking care of the home and work and getting the kids where they need to be and getting to sports games. It's like we are so busy. And business can become an enemy. It can become an obstacle where we lose focus of what's most important in our lives. We get so busy doing the things that are less important. So it's about focusing on what's the most important in our lives. So I've been, it's been a, I've been challenged myself since uh, Mr. Jordan said myself and the reality department went. But what is the most important thing in my life? What are the goals that I want in my life? I'm at the back nine in my life. So as I think about the years I have left, what do I want to do with my life? That's something, again, we get so busy with our lives. It's so full of noise and you need to be connected and plugged in. I would encourage all of us just to take a moment to reconsider that. And then related to that is, what are the goals we have for our children? Yes, we want them to be happy. Yes, we want them to be successful. But that's so vague. What does that look like? 
I firmly believe it's not the people who have the most money or have the most toys or are the happiest people, but it's the people who love the most. I think the people who love the most are the happiest people. And what we want to do here at SCC is we want to marinate them in our faith to know that they are loved without condition. There's not a priest wants to call me a Jesuit priest. There's nothing you can do to them to make God love you anymore. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. Doesn't mean that God always likes how I act, but God loves us without condition. And once we know that, we're going to have to share that love with other people. And the more we share that love, the more it comes back to us and it's uh, a cycle. So, again, I would encourage you to consider what do you want for your children? As Mr. Jordan so eloquently put a little bit ago, he and the church says the most important goal for a parent is to help your children get to heaven. This life is temporary, the next life is not. We want to help them to get to heaven, to find happiness in this life and absolutely in the next life as well. And I believe you studying your children here is definitely a step in that direction. You've sacrificed so much for your parents. And I know I have nine brothers and sisters, and I don't know that I can get a full appreciation for what my parents did for me and my siblings until I became. If you want that, the same is true for you. My only prayer for you is that someday your children appreciate all the hard work and sacrifice you make for your children, including sending them here. So what I want to do is I want to be partners in faith. And we're on the same page and sharing this beautiful faith that God has given to us to share that with our children. That means praying together as a family. That means going to church. That means living lives of service, helping each other, being there for each other, and helping those who are least among us. So that's kind of the first and the main point we get across today. And I know it's been, especially with COVID, it's, it's so easy to get out of the habit of going to church, but our children are watching us, and are watching our example. The second thing I want to talk about is service hours. I know that you are your repeaters. I just want to reiterate, we have that as a graduation requirement that every one of our students have to do 10 hours of service for every year and here for a total of 40 hours by the time they graduate. That's not just a hoop you jump through, but we believe, as it says in scripture, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. If we're not living our faith, it's all for naught. Pope John the 22nd, I'm sorry, Pope John Paul II once said that if your faith is not impacting how you act, practically speaking, you may as well be an atheist. People have practical atheism. And so we want our students to not only have that faith in their head, but believe in their hearts and to put in their actions with their hands. And so we have this service hour requirement. And so as you know, this mobile serve app, I think many of you know about it. If you don't, your students can have that on their iPad. You can also go to mobileserve.com students can log in and check up on that. Uh, seniors, senior parents, the deadline to get those at graduation department in is the last Friday of April. And yes, I will be helping them the second semester and I'll be emailing the parents for those people who are short, short of that. Also, once they complete 40 hours, keep up coming. Because I'll tell you, I write like letters of recommendation for colleges and job applications. First thing I do is I check their service hours. It's not uncommon for our students to have 100 service hours. And I put down the letter that our requirement's 40, they get 100. To me, that speaks to character. And that's what colleges, that's what employers are looking for. Also, it helps get a National Honor Society, um, college applications, and so on. So anyway, keep the hours coming even if they're not 40. Remember, if they can't get paid for it, if they can't clean their room, we can service hours for as much as we would all love that. So it can't benefit the family member and, and so on. I take care of student service hours, parent service hours, are done through the main office. Um, any questions about service hours? All right, last component, retreats. So we believe that a lot of part of uh, requirement of graduation is every one of our students has to go on a retreat for every year that they're here. So sophomore parents, if you raise your hands, I can talk to you directly. Sophomore parents, oh yeah, lots of sophomore parents. So on uh, September 21st, I don't remember exactly, it's right at that time period, 1920, it's said Tuesday. We're going to be taking the students to our Lady of Moral Parish in Temperance. He can like to be helping with retreats on Christian sexuality. We basically talk about chastity, we talk about God's love for us. We're not saying sex is dirty or that kind of thing. In a beautiful, in the context of marriage, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we talk about that. And if you want to come and talk about sexuality, sophomores come see. 
It's not an easy topic to talk about, especially salt. So again, it's going to be a lot more conversion retreat, but uh, on a completely different topic. So that's a salt retreat. Junior parents, great sure team. Junior parents, we're going to be having two junior retreats in the middle of October. The football, boys soccer, and cross country are supposed to go to the first one. Volleyball players are supposed to go in the second one. That's the request from the coaches. But no matter what retreat they're going on, Mr. Jansen is aware of it as well as the coaches and not going to get that much support. I'm going to try to get all the juniors their first choice, but I have to get the sports teams on those retreats first, and then I will get everybody and try to get everybody else their first choice. But we have to get you to We're going to go to Brooklyn, Michigan. It's a wonderful place. It's like Vineyard. We've been going there for a long time, and it's a really great retreat. It's the healing power of God. It's an opportunity for the juniors to get to get to know each other, to really get to know each other. Some people have had very difficult times in their lives. It's an opportunity for them to talk a little bit about their lives, to receive some healing and support from their classmates, and it really is a jelly time for the juniors. So I'm excited about that for the juniors. And then also for juniors, they're going to have an opportunity to go on a service trip. Uh, we have two service trips in Kentucky, one's over spring break, the other's in June, and then Guatemala will go on in June as well. Um, we do require that students help uh, do some fundraising by uh, contacting their parishes. So uh, some people speak and some people have baskets. Uh, but we raised, last, this last year we raised like $14,000. We were able to build two houses in Guatemala. And we were able to donate to Christ Dance, a homeless shelter, and that organization we're with in Kentucky. So it's a part of the service trip. What well, everybody will be able to go, if money is an issue, come see me, we'll work something. Junior parents, do you have any questions about the retreats or the service trips? Or if you do, you can come see me afterwards. This young love went this last year. She was an incredible asset. Do you have any thoughts on the junior? If you have the opportunity to do it, you do it. It's a lot of fun. You feel good about yourself afterwards. You made a difference in the world. You connect as a classmates. It really is a lot of fun. Lastly, senior parents. I'm almost finished. So senior parents and high It's going to be happening November 29th and December 1st. There's going to be three days in Clarkston, which is about an hour and a half north of here. Um, it, it's a high road surgery. Kairos is God's time. It's a great word for God. I'm, so it's God's time. So it's about separating ourselves from the ordinary life and entering into God's time. It really is. I believe the highlight for a senior class. Um, so I'm really excited about it. For those who've been through it before, we're going to need your help with that. I'll be receiving, sending you all a letter to um, solicit some help with that retreat. Please don't throw any mail away that doesn't have a return address. We do it anonymously because we don't want your students to find that. And you understand that when you get the letter. Um, any questions about uh, Kairos? We're going to have all the seniors go on that. So I really encourage you to have your juniors and seniors go on that. To go on your retreat because they really will miss out. A lot of this has been under Kim's ministry on our website. If you have any questions, please visit there. Um, or if you have any questions, you know where I live, it's right here. Um, all of us have our own roles. I take care of retreat service prayer. Um, come see us. Once again, I want to thank you for coming. Your being here speaks to your engagement and involvement in your kids' lives, and that's a testimony to you and to your family. So thank you so much. May God bless you. Have a great school year. If you have any questions, please stick around. Otherwise, what is not just have a good night.